So what's the big deal with a fiber laser and why should you even consider a fiber laser? We are going to see exactly what a fiber laser is all about, how it operates, how it's different and I'll share some reasons why it might just be the laser you didn't know you needed. And we'll also take a closer look at the car marker B4. Welcome to Melopine Lasers. This is the car marker B4. They sent me the machine for testing but this is not a sponsored video. So the first thing is, what can they really do? When it comes to marking metals, they are top notch. Sure, diet lasers can mark stainless steel but they are slow. Fiber lasers are the go-to for engraving a wide range of metals quickly and efficiently. You can even get different colors on steel and they are not just about metal. You can also use them to mark plastics like your AirPods, phone chargers or laptops and even create cool white contrast engravings on colored acrylic. But fiber lasers do have their limit. They are not great with materials like wood, clear acrylic and glass. For those you are better off with a CO2 laser. Let's break down how a fiber laser works. You have seen diode lasers, they have some really powerful LEDs and CO2 lasers come with their large tubes. Fiber lasers start with a diode laser too but then they use a special optical fiber. It's like a turbocharger for the laser, ramping up its power. All this is compactly built into the machine and a big plus there are no mirrors to align like in CO2 lasers. Since the laser beam travels directly through an optical cable to the machine's head, it's a simpler, more efficient setup. This also translates to a longer life for fiber lasers. Diode lasers have an operating life of around 10,000 hours. For CO2, it's around 2,000 to 4,000 hours. And for fiber lasers, it's a whooping 100,000 hours. Fiber lasers like this one operate in a specific part of the infrared spectrum. Now, there are diode lasers out there that work at this same wavelength but they are usually not as powerful, maxing out at about 2 watts. This means they can mark metals but they are pretty slow at it. Diode and CO2 lasers typically use a gantry setup which is bulkier. Fiber lasers don't need this moving frame setup which is one of the key changes when you switch to a fiber laser. The fiber laser uses a cool component called the galvo head to aim the laser exactly where it needs to go. Picture those flashy fast moving lasers at a concert, that's kind of what the galvo head does but for precise laser engraving. Inside the galvo head of the fiber laser, there are two mirrors, each controlled by its own motor. One motor moves the mirror along the x axis and the other along the y axis. But there's a catch, in such setups, the focus can be uneven especially at the edges. That's why this fiber laser uses a special lens known as an F theta lens. It's designed to keep the laser focused evenly across the entire surface. In a fiber laser, a tiny rotation of the mirror lets the laser cover a large area super quickly. It's like comparing a sprinter to a marathon runner. While diode lasers are like a brisk walk at 600 mm per second, Fiber lasers are sprinting at a lightning pace of 15,000 mm per second, way faster than CO2 lasers that max out at around 6,000 mm per second. You know how they say, With great power comes great responsibility. Scratch that. In the world of lasers, it's more like with great speed comes great detail. Here's the thing, I've got this diode laser that can hit a DPI of 420. But honestly, I never go about 254. Why? It's a time hog when you're aiming for that high resolution. Now, check out this image I engraved at 423 dpi on the B4. The details, mind blowing. And guess how long it took to engrave this? 4 minutes. If I had tried this on my diode laser, man, it would have taken at least 15 minutes to get it done. So, with diode and CO2, it's like you're always juggling cycle time and detailing, trading one for the other. This thing so fast, you barely even think about how long it takes. You end up with this combo, lightning fast engraving and super sharp details. Fiber lasers have an open design, unlike the enclosed CO2 lasers. Just make sure you use them in a well ventilated area or have a good smoke extractor and you'll be all good. Besides speed and power, there's another cool thing you can tweak on a fiber laser. The frequency. 
It's basically how often the laser pulses every second. Adjusting the frequency changes how the laser interacts with the surface. Use a low frequency for deep engraving or crank it up for a lighter touch that can even change the color of the top surface. This kind of precise control isn't something you'd find in diode or CO2 lasers. The 20 watt com marker B4 for example lets you adjust the frequency between 20 to 60 kHz, giving you a good range to experiment with. Another nifty feature of fiber lasers is the framing tool. The B4 has this cool red laser pointer. When you use the framing function, it shows your design right on the workpiece, not just tracing a basic rectangular frame like you'd see with Grand Tree style lasers. This makes it super easy to position your material. While some CO2 lasers use a camera for positioning, the real-time overlay from the B4's pointer is more straightforward and a foolproof method. Talking about foolproof options, if you are into lasers, you should definitely subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. It's like a mini magazine full of laser stuff, read by thousands every week. No fluff, really cool laser insights. And for the deep divers, there's my Lightburn Masterclass course. It's all about boosting your skills. I'll leave the links in the description, do check it out. Also tell me, what's the one thing about lasers you wish you knew more about? Your answers will help me tailor future videos and newsletters to your interests. Now let's talk about the power part. Fiber lasers starts out at 20 watt. The B4 I have here is the 20 watt one. Com marker also offers the B4 in 30, 50, 60 and 100 watt configuration. Galvo style fiber lasers are not designed for cutting, but I was able to cut through 0.2 mm thick aluminum business card in about 10 passes at 8 mm per second. Now comes the size. A fiber laser will take up much less space than a diode or CO2. Especially when both the source and the head are in the same unit like in the B4. There are other fiber lasers where the source is in a different unit but I like this form factor as it saves a lot of space. Regarding portability, this device is compact in size, yet it's heavier than a diode laser. However, when compared to CO2 lasers, which are not portable at all, it's a far more convenient option. The Comarker B4 also comes with this nifty attachment. You remove the head, put the attachment in place, and now you can do handheld engraving. Maybe on a car or do a laser show, so, is a fiber laser bad at anything? Well, yes. They are not great with materials like wood, glass or clear acrylic and they are not the best option for cutting jobs. Also, due to their Galvo style setup, the work area is usually limited to around 8 by 8 inches. Now let's look at the cost factor. You could get a good diode laser at around $600 to $700. A good CO2 laser with some bells and whistles would cost upwards of $2000. When it comes to fiber lasers, they start around $1800, but this one is 20 watt and you can get it for around $1700. If you compare a 20 watt fiber with a 20 watt diode, the fiber is gonna cost you at least $1000 more than the diode. And if you compare a 100 watt CO2 with a 100 watt fiber, the fiber will cost at least $2000 more than the CO2. So the fiber laser is a bit expensive than the other lasers. It all boils down to what you want to do. If you are primarily going to mark metals and plastics that could fit within its work area, the fiber laser is a good choice if you have the budget. You could do jobs in a fraction of the time that it takes on the other lasers. Now let's look at what I think about the com marker B4. The build quality is quite good. It has sturdy metal construction all around. You have the buttons in the right places. On the front, you have an e-stop, two buttons to move the head up and down for focus. You could also use this hand crank over here for tiny adjustments. There is a power button on the front as well. Now, if you look at the head, there is a R button and an M button. The R button is for red laser. It shows you what you're going to get on your workpiece. The M button is for marking. You send your job to the laser and if you are burning the same design onto multiple pieces, you don't need to go back to your computer each time. You just place your workpiece and press M. Another great feature of the B4 is its placers. You attach them to the workbed, set your workpiece in place and position your design just how you want it. Plus it comes with a foot pedal, press it, 
and the laser starts the job. For example, when marking poker chips from small acrylic pieces, I just load each one, hit the pedal and it's done. The placers ensure perfect positioning every time. Check out this real-time footage to see how quick and efficient it makes it. Now, let's look at some of the test runs we did. So I got really good results once I dialed in the settings. The detailing is sharp and accurate. The thing with dimensional accuracy when it comes to fiber lasers depends on how well you calibrate it. I have to say there is a little bit of a learning curve here. I also liked how quiet it runs. It's quieter than my diode and CO2 lasers and even my fume extractor. Parmarker provides the EasyCAD 2 software in a thumb drive with the machine and it didn't need a license. But my favorite is Lightburn and the B4 is compatible with Lightburn as well. The B4 includes two lenses, a 110mm lens and a 200mm lens. The 200mm lens offers a larger work area of about 8 by 8 inches but with a bit less detail. While the 110mm lens provides finer detail in a smaller 4x4 inch area. Swapping the lens is pretty straightforward. But you have to do a calibration check the first time you use these lenses. After that, all you need to do is select the right configuration whenever you change the lens. I also got this huge rotary accessory and this thing is really heavy. It's a NEMA 34 stepper motor and quite sturdy. There is tilt adjustment that lets you engrave on the inside of your circular pieces. The rotary has its own dedicated driver module which is good for accuracy. You can engrave tumblers or mark on cylindrical metal parts. I even used the rotary to engrave on a gold ring. So yeah, this can do gold. The other stuff you get are a manual, a spacer for handheld engraving, laser safety goggles, a ruler, material pack and a manual with illustrations. In terms of after sales, you get a 2 year warranty and Commarker offers email based support. So to sum it all, the Commarker B4 is a well rounded machine. It has a good sturdy build quality and all the things you would need for a small business. It's got the right features for convenience and is an affordable choice when it comes to fiber lasers. So that's it about the Commarker B4. As we wrap up, I'm eager to hear from you what other laser related topics you would like me to explore in future videos. Your feedback shapes this channel. If you found the video helpful, give it a like and please consider subscribing. You'll be helping the laser community grow. Thank you so much for watching the video, hope to see you in the next one.